Thank you for joining the May 14th, 2019 Boulder Call. We have a few topics for our discussion today, and we do post the meetings to YouTube, so please keep that in mind during the discussions and any presentations if we have any today. With that, I think we will go ahead and get started. We do have a fair number of new JIRAs to look over. A number of them are related to the uh, recent brigade activity that started up. And then also there was one topic I wanted to allow a little time for discussion here to close that out or resolve it if possible. I don't think this was resolved over email. And so there is a, a link in the agenda that I sent out to that email thread. And then I believe we also wanted some time for Zach to talk about some ideas he had for documentation for 2.0 and beyond for Volta. And then with any remaining time we have, the uh, the 2.1 Sprint 1 was started this week, and the plan was, uh, as discussed earlier, three weeks for that duration. And we have a number of stories that rolled over from uh, when we closed out Sprint 17 for 2.0. A number of those incomplete items did roll over into Sprint 1 for 2.1. And then we've been trying to pull over the in-progress items and ones that were into uh, Sprint 1 as well. So there are probably additional ones that need to be pulled over and, and we need to check to make sure that the ones that are in there are still the right targets for 2.1 Sprint 1. With that, I think we'll go ahead and get started reviewing the new JIRAs. Any comments before we go into that topic? Uh, Julie, I I yeah. am not ready to present on the documentation. So um, if that could be moved to next Thursday, that would be great. I just next Thursday next week or Thursday this week. Uh, this week. I yeah, I'm sorry about that. I I just have had no problem loaded with some other things. I did not think we were going to have time for all of the topics today anyway. So that is fine. Okay. All righty. Thank you. All right. We'll talk about that on Thursday. Thank you. Any other comments before we we go into the review for the new JIRAs? Okay, then let's go take a look at those, starting with 1610. I think we may have briefly talked about this one last week. Uh, this one is the update Volta version API to return additional version information. And this was part of that release engineering uh, epic that was created. So we've mapped that over to that item. Any comments from the group? Any target we would like for a release for this item? Do we want to try and get this in 2.1? Or Okay, we'll leave it as unassigned at this point. Then let's go on to 1611. Was there a comment? Nope, I think it's just some noise on the bridge. All right, next item uh, is... Uh, one yes. question. David, are you trying to say, some, speak, some, say something? I was just going to say that this is a nice to have, so it's not critical to get in the sprint. It can yeah. just be backlogged when someone picks it up. and. Julie had already taken it forward, so I said, didn't need to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in terms of the nice to have, do we want to look at putting it into a target release yet or just leave it in the future category at this point? Uh, assuming everyone's book solid, I'd just leave it as a backlog. Yeah. Okay, we'll do it, thanks. Okay, uh, 1611 is a defect that was opened. In memory data values may get occasionally reverted by watch event. And this one was opened by Stefan and I think is uh, going to be worked by Stefan as well. Yes, that's correct. Okay, and we've got the description in here for uh, the issue at hand. And I do have a question do you know if this one should be mapped into the active sprint or is this a later item it is a low priority defect uh, do you know when Stefan is planning to work on it uh, he's actually working on it so I think I'll put it in the uh, active sprint okay then let me go ahead and target this for 2.1 
and move that into the active sprint. Thank you, Ken. All right, questions from the group before we move to the next item. All right. Then well, six, just, yes. Could we just des describe what's going on here a little bit? And so, so in memory data values, we get occasionally eroded by watch event. So we have an instance that has a certain data value in memory that then gets changed back by this watch event. No, this is pretty much when you have uh, something happening in memory, something is changing the data in memory, and at the same time, um, a watch event comes in with a different set of data. That uh, should what really generates, happen. What generates the watch event? Uh, in this scenario that uh, Stefan was, uh, was trying, it was generated by another call writing the same, to the same set of data. Okay. So it was forcing that to happen. Like in in in, uh, in practice, uh, it will happen only under timeout condition. Like uh, uh, one call cannot handle the event; the other call will take over the request and start to proceed with it. Uh, it's it's very rare for that to happen. Uh, but uh, if this happened, then we get a situation where we have uh, data coming from the database that is different from data at memory. So he has to merge uh, the two data together. And at times there's some uh, data that get overwritten. So that, that's uh, why he has this uh, JIRA to, to take care of that. So what, what's the real data? Sorry? What's the, what's the, I guess, the source of truth to the data? Is that the in-memory data or is that in the core, in, in, the, in the KB store? In, in this specific scenario, I, I don't know what exact scenario he was trying to test, but typically the, the truth will, will be from, uh, from the call, uh, not from the call, from, uh, from the DB, not uh, from the call, because it, typically what is in memory, uh, that transaction has been taken over by the other call, which has written to the database, and, and that should be the source of truth. Well, wouldn't the guy that, um timed out on accessing the KB store, just discard what it has? Yeah, and typically it, it should, uh, but that's why it's like, a, he's trying to trace this back because it, huh. uh, the testing scenario is just kind of like, it's not, uh, he's forcing the test to, to happen a certain way, which I, I don't believe that will happen, will really be the case in, uh, in production. In a sense of, when he was doing this, he was not using the affinity router. He was trying to mimic uh, uh, sending requests to two calls uh, instead of using the affinity router, which is not uh, uh, the proper test. But uh, it can. But then this scenario may arise if if, if it happens. So that's why he's looking at it. Okay, I can't say I fully understand, but all right. <laughs> But, but uh, yeah, yeah, again, right, so which one is the master? You know, you have in-memory data, yeah, and then you have the stuff in the KV store. Um, would they be, a, you know, do we do we have a de facto, like, a, which one always take as the master, and then the other thing we'll sync up with? Like I said, like, uh, this specific scenario that he's testing, uh, it was not following the, the proper pattern that should happen. Pretty much at, uh, if we use the affinity router, then only one call would handle uh, the, the request. And only one mm -hmm. call would be writing to the DB. And the other call would just uh, listen to watch events and there won't be any uh, two, uh, to the scenario where you will have data coming from database and data being written from the core on the same set of device. That should not happen. Uh, so in this specific scenario, if that does happen for whatever reason, then uh, whoever has written to the database first 
that's the source of data. So the database is the is a source of truth. Okay. Um, okay. And he's almost finished. I think the story point is very low. So okay. I was saying, you know, if this is really rarely happened. Do we really need to spend so yeah, you know, even so much energy talking about it? Uh, but since it's only one story point, and I think you probably can finish that pretty quickly, right? Yeah, I think you should put more story points. There. I don't think it should be one. I think should should be a bit more than that because for uh, based on the on the on the complexity in the model of how things works, so I don't think it would be like uh, it might have hours to complete that. I think you should uh, you should update it with uh, more story points there. Okay. So Ken, I'll I'll let you go ahead and prompt Stefan to update the story points if that's all right. When he has yeah, a sure. sense of how it should be. Okay. Yeah. Other discussion on this item. All right. Let's go on to sixteen twelve. We talked about this briefly with Zach uh, last week, and this is the Volta release engineering process. So I do want to circle back in case people weren't on the call on Thursday and see if there's anything additional we need to talk about with this today. Uh, Zach, you're on the bridge as well, so feel free to speak up. So we did get a number of assignees identified um, on la during last week's discussion of this topic, but we have a few items that are still in the to-do state. And then 1610 we just spoke about earlier, which is a low priority item. So um, the, a lot of the CI side of things has been, um, has been finished. Uh, okay. The, uh, for example, the, the jobs for pr publishing the Helm charts for creating versions and other stuff. And I know there are a lot of people who are in progress on, on some of these um, for releasing the core and, and a few other things, um, changing over to the different way of building Docker images. Um, if we want to, we can go through the, uh, all the, the subsequent uh, issues that are a part of this and, and touch on them. The, is it's like 1613 through 1620, I guess. Yes. yes, okay. Then I'll go ahead and just take them as we go up the line. So we bring up the image or the display for each. Then 1613 is the configure release process for Go, Volta Go repo. That is the first item. It seems that there's uh, quite a few merged. Yeah, there are a few that are in, in process, and um, I know um, Matt Genre has the, the 13896, the top one, that we've been going over. That also is getting pulled into the discussion about the 1.12 Golang update. Um, so so let, me, let me ask a question then. Does it make sense to go to that topic while we're discussing this, or should we wait till we review the rest of the new issues? I wasn't sure in what order to handle those discussions. Any preferences? I I think um, it, it's related, definitely. Um, it we could if you if you wanted to jump to it. Um, I know that uh, various people have weighed in on it already on the mailing list. Okay. So let's go over there. So this is the topic we're talking about is this one here on update and go 112. And this discussion, there was some talk of it last week. And then this week, there's been some additional email kicked off on the discussion list. And then I don't, I don't know which one we want to start with. Um, uh, and then there's there's been some additional folks weighing in with comments. But we wanted to, I want to make sure we get a closure on this to get a path forward. So, I, Zach, I I'll go ahead and start with you since you had opened up the first comment here. Yeah, so just to set the scene, um, the what was going on was while um, I was looking at Matt Genre's patches, um, I, I went and was trying to see versions of, of upstream containers we were using. And 
in that I looked at the Golang official images and they're not building uh, 1.10 images with more recent um, security patches uh, for the Alpine image. So last February they stopped doing it when they jumped to 1.12. Uh, so the suggestion I was making was that if Volta 2.0 is going to stay on the same version of Go through its entire release cycle, um, having it on a on a current version seems like it would make sense. Um, and I just wanted to get the community's feedback on it. It's not because it's kind of not my decision. I just I just want everyone to make sure that um, or but I, I did I did see an issue with um, staying on the one to ten version. Right, and I think this portion is new information that wasn't part of the discussion last week. Yeah, that's correct. And so that's that's causing the revisit of of the issues. So let me see. Uh, anyone else want to? to provide some feedback or discussion next. Or if you want me to jump to a specific message in here, let me know and I'll do that. I think the general technical consensus is that it makes sense to go and that it likely will have very little technical impact on the project. And why I brought up kind of the objection or the, hey, do we need to bounce this up? was because last time we discussed this, there was concern in the community about jumping to 112 right before a release. And I do yeah. think that jumping to 112 um, takes us to a test cycle that needs to be completed before we actually tag 2.0, to be honest. And that's why I believe it need to kind of go to the next level of uh, consensus. Again, from a technical standpoint, I think it's, it's the right thing to do, but it's, just because there was concern last meeting, I thought maybe a broader audience might be need to be brought in. And we've got some, I see chips on here today. And uh, Sean Massette, I heard you earlier. Amit is on the. Don. And also Amit. Yes. Are oh, you looking at the? the I was looking for the TST members if we need them to weigh in on something specifically. I don't. And I don't Chad, remember the individual. Chad, I, yeah, I don't remember yeah. the individual or individuals that were raised the issues or concerns last week. So I don't know if they were TST okay. members or just community members. Okay. Okay. And then yeah, you know, we do have Shad's uh, uh, preference in here as well from the developer side. So. Let me see if I can find uh, the one talked about, you know, if we move this forward, we need to have a test cycle. And I'm trying to remember which one that was in. Here we go. I think this is the one. So this, the I think the proposal on the table here uh, from the folks who have weighed in on this email chain is to uh, the preference on the technical side is to make this move now, but then that would delay the release by or tagging the release by probably a week or so and I think Shad roughly said yes about a one one to two week delay is expected of how testing is done to make sure everything is stable after this change is made so then I think this is the, the time to take it to the group so this is like I said revisiting with the new information we have as well is this the right thing to do at this time and then delay tagging of 2.0 a little bit longer? So the 2.0 the has not been tagged yet, right, Zach? That's correct. Um, the, uh, there are some things related to how the Docker files were created um, that we've been working on um, or that Matt's been working on with input from everyone. Um, that were needed to happen before 2.0 could get tagged. On Sprint's point of view, so if we allow a, a one or two weeks to be to to have this ta tagging to happen, we can still working on the 2.1 Sprint, right? We don't have to delay the calls the 2.1 Sprint. I think the main concern was that um, to prevent 2.1 items or non-stability testing um, fix sort of things from getting into the 2.0 while 2.1 is being worked on. 
I was actually suggesting 2.1 doesn't start until we finish 2.0, which means people focus on testing and move that forward. So what level of testing we're talking about? Bang the heck out of it. Make sure <laughs> it works. Um, right, we to, to do a, a test cycle, the code has to stay stable. And there are various ways that can be done, to be honest. But the, the problem is if the test cycle reveals bugs and people have moved the code base forward, some of those. So, so yeah, the Volta yeah, core yeah, the, already running, the core, the, the, you know, it's already been tested 1.12, right? No, I think the core is 1.10, I believe. Yeah. I thought that the beginning of the email was saying you guys uh, you already started back in February. Did I misunderstand something? I don't recall that in the email. But oh, that, that, oh, no longer build update to go over the official Docker image. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, 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 I think right now, as far as I know, the 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 go the go. Uh, version will only impact in the Volta core and the Go adapter, right? So, Ken, how much time do you yeah. need? Well, it'll, it'll just be regression testing, right? So it, it shouldn't be like. But you can't. You I can't just, just, just. Test. You've got to. This is a release we're trying to do. You have to go through the whole release test cycle. That's how you ensure that what you cut as a release is stable. You can't, we can't just run unit tests here and say it works. Yeah, I, well, I have a, I have a question on the general release cycle in, in general. I mean, wouldn't be, it be appropriate to create a version 2.0 branch where we, where we basically have something that's a fixed point in time that can be tested at, and then we do our 2.0 tag once we verify that that is the release, wouldn't that mm -hmm. give us proper control over the source code? I, I think that's fine. Um, I still don't think you want to start developing 2.1 features because if you, the more you you take kind of master forward with 2.1 as well as you bug fix 2.0, emerge double edits, you know, you're, you're we basically you promote any process. Yeah, you promote any fixes in your 2.0 branch up to master. I mean, that's just the normal release process. You you do you're doing double edits. Um. So the question is, from my perspective, do we get through the test cycle faster and do we get a more stable 2.0 release if we pause 2.1 development and have people just start? deploying and beating up on 2.0 as a test cycle. And then once we're happy with 2.0, move forward with 2.1. Or does but, more people you know, beating up not actually uh, bias anything? Do we have I any? don't know what. It, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Ken, go ahead. OK. Do we have a? release a, a set of tests to test a release i don't think we have it which well, is I, why I, I think we need people just beating up on it installing it breaking it finding the holes so are we saying that we haven't tested 2.0 at this point or we, we've done some testing or no we have done testing but we have not done a release Type test uh, to, you know, with all the different components, try to break things left and right and center. I mean, a quick question, right? Do a quick survey. How many people have installed and run 2.0? What percent of the community? I would, I would say probably Foundry have done that. And uh, 
Ahmed, uh, at least on a Go adapter, working, and Sienna, right? And then the, I, I don't believe the North Forge has working on the automation testing based on based on 2.0 yet. Um, Chip, have you have you built 2.0 yet? Not 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 in the last, not since I've started with Tibet and all. I'm just finally got my full development environment and hardware working, so I'm not there yet. Right. But I, I'm I'm guessing from a test perspective that the testing on release 2.0 would be on the low side um, in terms of normal release testing to this point. Yes. Yes. I'm not. But uh, again, right? My 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 point is about tech in 2.0. It's not based on whether it's going to be deployable or not, right? Even open OT adapter on the go base, there's still a lot of holes there. But we, we need to mark a time frame and we march forward so we don't dwell on um, keep developing on the 1.x branch. Right, and, and David, I agree, you know, uh, how many t testing has been done. But at the same time, I, I you know, I, I cannot say, you know, uh, you know, delay getting into the 2.0 were helping us to complete all test cases for the 2.0. I understand, I guess my belief is the stronger the foundation, the better off we're gonna be in the long run. And no, right I, now, I, 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 I'm not terribly convinced of the strength of that foundation. That again, that's my preference. That's my input. Not, you know, it, it is just one person's opinion. It, you know, I, I I think we need to bring the two the X release to the point. Even the 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 the, the testing will make sense. I don't I don't. Right now, I think it's, we are only in the piecework on your part, right? You t you're testing the core using the Pound V2, or you're testing the other thing. And then, so, so, and I just don't, you know, we, we can, you know, we can just, I, I don't want to go back there. <laughs> so, um, and Bjorn, if you want to say make a statement, that's fine. And by the same time, I think uh, is Amit on the call. I believe so, but he may be on mute. I see him in the attendee. Yes, Sean. I'm on. Yes. So, so, and I, I, I believe you guys also using a go go one dot ten, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, so if we jump on to go 1.12, do you have a sense of idea how, uh, how many additional testing you need to be doing, stopping what, what, what the developing and, but make sh making sure that 1.12 is, uh, whatever they've already developed, developed that can be, can, you know, can work with the 1.12. Do you have some kind of idea on that? Uh, no, uh, we really haven't uh, tried to gauge how much of an additional work it would um, uh, incur, but um, I think if it needs to be done, we will go ahead and just do it. So, David, you know, I think right now, only Sienna the, the working on the core side and also the goal, the goal adapter which is the red assist. Yes. And, um, and uh, what, again, what I'm, you know, maybe I need to go back to Sienna and ask again, you know, assuming the, the, the current um, 
based on the current state of the core, how much time you need to you do you need to finish the testing yeah. uh, for the one dot twelve. So so Sean, I'll be I'll be I'll try to be really clear. The move to one twelve, I think will have very little impact on any test results. If any. I honestly don't mm -hmm. think. And I'll be uh, transparent that I'm I'm using this issue a little bit to emphasize that we need to do better testing before we tag things and create releases. And in particular, I think, as I, I said a moment ago, we are on the low side of testing, not just individual components, but interactions of those components. And it worries me that we, we haven't had lots of people working to stabilize the core beyond Sienna and beyond the people working on the adapters to stabilize these interactions and get them rock solid before we're moving on to adding new feature sets and new capabilities. Um, and so again, I'm using this 112 issue a little to push kind of my personal agenda around that. Uh, again, I don't think in reality, if I run a test today, then upgrade to 112 and run the test tomorrow, I'm going to see any difference. But I do think we need to test more and um, not just say Sienna's on the core, therefore Sienna's testing that, or Radis is on an adapter, Radis is testing that. We need to have eyes on from different participants on different parts of the code. Anybody that works on any single piece of code will get uh, blind to certain things and having a second set of eyes coming from a different perspective is needed. And if we really want to get both to production quality, we need that cross pollination, particularly around testing and using, using the thing, uh, protect, particularly around using the whole system and not just component parts. So there, I'll get off my soapbox now and um, let things move forward. Okay, so I'm, Sean, if you want to say something, go ahead. Otherwise, I wanted to try and break things down a little bit. Uh, just one last question, right? So uh, the the Jills uh, on the North Forge side, um, yes. The A test. How can we up? Uh, how soon we can update it to the 2.0 using the 2.0 core? Do you, do you have a sense on that? Uh, okay, so I, I just became aware uh, just recently that uh, the Volta 2.0 repo is different than what I had been using. So I've, I've been doing my work on master. So I, I completed uh, a recent code integrity uh, improvement uh, for, uh, for BBSIM. And I want to complete the last two test cases uh, on BBSIM. So that's authentication and uh, DHCP. And then I will move to Volta 2.0, and I plan. I, I I need about three days to plan out um, the work that's required, and then I'll uh, I'll get back to you. So, so guys, do you have um, a set of prerequisites you need for that? And um, the one that X Branch currently is built has Helm charts. It has published artifacts, various other things like that. Are those things that, um, what, sir, what, what does the community need to do to help you to be able to do that testing? Uh, yeah, you're, you're uh, correct. I, I, I need the, uh, the Helm charts. Uh, I need, uh, now I'm not sure, I'm doing all my testing via CLI. So the CLI has to be there and present and, and working. And I don't know whether that's the case yet. Um, what else is it? Well, I'm, I'll be doing, I'll be running uh, Kubernetes. So that's, that's what I, I intend to do. So yeah, beyond that, I, I don't know. There's nothing that really comes to mind. Um, I'll, I'll just have to see when I get there. Okay. So Zach, as as Gilles runs across things that are dependencies, is that something that you can help with, or should we just bring that to Volt to discuss, or 
what so, do you, so what do you think some of these things have? are already in the release engineering epic. Um, yeah. And, but I, I do think that those those are important because I, I maybe we don't have as good of a as as David was bringing up. I don't think we have as good of a idea of what our testing goals are for 2.0. So um, that that sort of that's going to have to be community driven. I I don't I don't have enough knowledge to to say well, uh, w what exactly needs to be done there. But um, it would I, I can definitely help. Um, on, on the technical and release engineering side um, for, from the ONF perspective. Okay, thanks, Zach. And Gilles, if you run into issues, let Sean or me know also if there's something that we can help with, and we'll try and get you connected with the the right folks. Yeah, and uh, Kailash, yeah, one of the things he, he has done, I guess, I guess he has the, uh, uh, test automation disabled uh, presently on 2.0, so that's going to have to be the case okay. until I, yeah, so, okay. uh, yeah, but wh whatever I find, yeah, I'll, I'll pass it on, yeah, for sure. Thank you. Okay, so I think, let me go back to the initial discussion that we kicked this off with. I, I kind of see this as multiple different things. We need to make a few decisions. And uh, one, I think, is that the larger strategy related to the release testing, it sounds like that needs to be a separate, deeper discussion, perhaps. So I, I'm trying to view that as a separate, larger topic at this point from the initial decision we need, which is whether or not to go ahead on 2.0 so we have this assumption again that we want to be on the same release, same version of Go through the entire release cycle for 2.0. Hence the uh, discussion about updating to Go 1.12 at this point prior to release. So this seems to, from the discussion on the email threads, at least have support from the developers that this is the right decision to do from folks who've weighed in here. Um, and it sounds like also that's viewed technically as a low risk, but we do want to do some level at least of due diligence with the testing to make sure that once we've made that change, things are as stable as we can get them with the current test plans, then that also leads to the larger test strategy discussion. But I think we need to make the decision on, are we going to do this update to go 1.12? And then that leads to the decision is if we do that, how do we handle it? Because we have two uh, competing discussions I've heard related to what do we do with the, with 2.1. Do we do a code freeze so that we're not doing any, at least for new features, no 2.1 development coming in? Or do we follow the approach which Chip suggested where we create the branch and then there is some additional work so that development can continue, but then you do have to do additional work with anything that you're submitting to keep things in sync and keep track of stuff. So there are, I think, a couple different decisions to make here. And if I've misrepresented anything or misunderstood, please let me know. But can we separate it into a couple discrete decision points in order to move forward? Will that work? Anyone have thoughts on it? Um, I would I, say from the, founders, from the founders side, we've we have done an initial test with with Go 1 at 12, and it seemed to work okay. I mean, there's more testing, a little more okay. to do, but okay. That's William. I think that's you speaking. Yes, that's it. And we did this okay. with our actual hardware here. Okay. So we have had some testing going on with the Foundry folks um, on one with 1.12. So in terms of the community, William, do you know? What, yeah, William, do you know? William, do you know? Uh, uh, on the on the Voda core side, do you guys using the 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 multiple core with the high availability, everything? Um, no, this is this is the same that we've been running. We're a single core. We haven't really start. Trying out multiple cores. 
but is the is the affinity router also installed with the single cord? We haven't been using it. Um, I'm not sure the status on that. Okay. I mean, we've been going with this kind of the standard, kind of simple setup of just having a core with the adapters running with Docker Compose and through all that. Um, Sean, did you have any other questions? Um, I'm, 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 again, right. So we know that the feature will continue to come in on the Go OOT adapter portion. It will, and then there are some more on the 1.7, which we are not monitoring in detail here. And 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 the uh, I and the, the ONU adapter. I, I I don't believe there will be additional work. Um, at least it's it's going to be continue to run as Python um, based. So um, I, you know I, I'm thinking about what Chip was saying, right? So, but at the same time, I I'm not aware. Julie, you know, we're, we're doing the, we're doing all these uh, the, the 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 spring planning, all that kind of stuff. But other than the Go OOT adapter, I don't see anything else additional for the 2.1 is coming in uh, at this point. Maybe the F caps, uh, other things, but they they those also depending on the on the on the OOT adapter, right? So I can look at the current in progress work here. We have a bunch of uh, testing activities underway. Uh, we have some work on some stats, perhaps, and ONU delete on the Golang at OLT adapter. Uh, and and the additional, yeah. what, what, what I love around the Python side. On the Python adapter here. And then we have some Which is common uh, for both. tech profile as a defect. So defects, I think we said, are likely OK. That's a medium priority one. Uh, and some additional tech profile work in progress, port status change, uh, documentation, I think is fine. We have the defect we talked about earlier today, uh, another defect, medium priority on incorrect device state. And then some ONU registration ID related activities. So that's what's currently in progress, uh, to my knowledge, um, at the moment, at at this time. If Jira is accurate. Let me go back to the other screen. So, so let me um, ask, is, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, I was going to ask, are we going to be able to come to a resolution on this call? Do we need to? All right. I think this is something where we need to make a decision quickly. We need to do it thoughtfully. But, you know, we're talking about potentially delaying the release here, which is the recommendation from the folks who chimed in on the email thread. And then it's a question of, of if we do this, do we freeze the code or we do a separate branch and follow chip suggestion? And there's some additional work for the people who are, who are bringing in code changes at that point. So there are a couple approaches we can take, um, but I think we still need to get that fundamental decision on, on do we follow the recommendation from this email thread to do the update to go 1.2 at this time? I still haven't heard I haven't heard a a final I think I, answer there. I think. Well, well but again, right? So one dot two. I think one dot one dot twelve basically 1 .12. is a moot point. I um, mean, you know, we we don't believe it will be a too big an impact, right? So correct. Uh, and 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 I think uh, basically the some. You know, community is right now w wondering whether 2.0, if we tag it, does it mean anything? 
right? Does it mean it's something you know solid and then deployable and stable? And I cannot say it is. Um, but again, I I I I I do believe tagging it has doesn't mean stability, but it has other other impact in the positive way to move the project forward. Um, so that that is my 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 reasoning about you know it's nothing technical, but it's something we want to push forward the 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 the, the releases. Um, again, without the working OpenOLT adapter to map into the 1.6 priority priority, priority um, it's not something it can work right. Um, not with full feature parity, that's correct. So, so Sean, I think that's, you're going into almost an ad additional topic, you know, which was touched on by David as well. So in the email thread, the, the talk was still about doing a 2.0 release, but it's with a short delay before we tag it. So pushing that, that release date out by another week or two to allow this change. And then we had the the question about whether we do a code freeze or not. So I, I my take from this, separate from, so David, you can chime in if you want as well, but I, I think from the email discussion, at least there was you know, still acceptance of doing a 2.0 tag after this change. Yeah, I, I just wanted I, last I, week. I just wanted to posit that if we, we pause and take a week mm -hmm. or two or whatever to do testing and to upgrade at the 1.12 if we don't have broader community support in doing that testing in other words if more more people don't install 2.0 in the ha multiple pairs and run it mm -hmm. then that test cycle really isn't going to benefit us that's true right so it, it's it's not just saying hey we're going to take two weeks and run unit tests on with 1.12 I'm really um, appealing to the community to install and beat up on mm -hmm. um, the core, the, in particular, the adapters as well, in a 2.0 HA multiple core deployment. And, and I think, again, if we do that, we, we potentially will get lots more bugs, and um, but end up better off down the road. But if all we're going to do is say, well, in the next two weeks, we're going to take today and we're going to merge Matt's changes for 112 or I guess even the make fail updates. We're going to merge the changes for the 112, run the unit tests and don't really do anything else or we just keep doing what we're doing. The two week period is not going to buy us anything. There's a behavior change. That I think I think you have a valid point there. And again, it, it's I'm not trying to blame others because again, we're, we're we me I'll speak for myself. I can't speak for others. I'm just as guilty but uh, we, we just need some better testing. Agree. Um, so I think, I, I think we need to give Jill three days, maybe by the end of this week, he will give us some um, update regarding to how 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 he can update uh, you know update the the current suite in and then adapt it into the 2.0 core um so yeah uh, and and I, I believe the 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 redis the dt they continue to develop the the containerization of the oot and those will not stop And I think we on Tuesday, right? There's no really reason to. I mean, I, we have not tagged the 2.0. I'm not against being delayed a week or two to tag it, but the, I, I, I would just say the development work will not be stopping. I think that's the reality, right? Then I would posit we're not going to get any better testing than if we just do immediately. If if people aren't going to move from kind of a 2.1 feature development to doing testing for whatever reason 
then we're not actually going to improve our testing, our tests on the on the 2.0 core. Right. So if we if we continue 2.1 development, that's fine. That's a decision. But we're not the tests that we run today on 2.0 or the tests that we're going to run tomorrow, and then we don't need to delay a tag for a week because it's really not going to be a difference. Yeah, but at the same time, I'm hoping, you know, now we put the pressure. I mean, you know. But, but you, you just torture. said that people will, people will continue to do one development. And if that's true, those, that time, that energy is going to be spent on 2.1 feature development, not testing, if that's true. And that's fine. People have their reasons for doing that. I get that. But unless people spend cycles testing, the tests don't improve. So I, I don't want to delay a tag for a week for no benefit. And if that's the way we want to go, that's fine. I'd, I'd, I'd rather continue that way and not, not waste a week and just tag it if we're not going to get any benefit and just move on. Right? I, I'm not trying to propose that we waste people's time or delay for no reason. So we, we're either going to choose as a community to focus on testing for a week and beat the heck out of 2.0 to we're fairly sure that we have identified at least all the bugs in terms of an HA capability, multiple core, real hardware that we can, given its, its feature set, or we're not. And if agree. Not, but let's tag and move on. Agreed, but I, I don't think that's something can be done within one week or two. Um, I, 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 and I would, I would, I, I would say, you know, if we can get the, the the QA testing up to speed based on what we have, I think that's probably the better place. We we'll have the better control. Again, what, what, I, what I'm hearing then is it doesn't make sense to delay a tag. Let's update to 112, run the tests that we have today, the unit tests we have today, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and move on is kind of what I'm hearing. And if that's a decision, that's fine. I'm, I'm not personally happy with it, but that's fine. I, and that makes more sense to me than, than delaying a tag for no benefit. So, so what's the imperative to go to 112? I mean, it's imperative to the one again. Again, um, the imperative 112, as Zach pointed out, is 110 is uh, end of life, or will be end of life within the uh, lifetime of Volta 2.0. So to put Volta 2.0 on a consistent version of Go over its lifetime, we need to move. Um, so that's that's the thing. The other thing is it's it's just old. Um, there are improvements I think I'm sure that we would benefit from. Two point zero is is not, you know, hopefully wouldn't be used by a, a lot of anybody. Real applications, <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, so I mean, I don't see there's a, a need to go to one twelve in the two dot line, but two two point one we could do it. Yeah, uh, it, it just. Again, and, and I'm conflating issues, right? Again, from the 112 issue, I don't think that's a big deal. If we move to 112, our unit tests work today, they'll work tomorrow. I honestly believe that. Um, I'm, and I'm conflating the issue that we really we're ready to move when we haven't, in my opinion, done as much testing we could um, what we have. And that's, that's, that's the issue I'm conflating with 112. So if we're looking at just the 112 issue, and not not to change testing, move to 112, run the unit tests, and I, uh, you know, I'll bet Sean's badge that everything will be all fine, be fine. Um, sorry, Sean. <laughs> real, real conviction there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and by the way, there are two. We have two people. You, you got to. Oh, sorry. I'm a, I'm a you, Sean Ying. Sorry. <laughs> so I, 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 you I have a badge. <laughs> Um, but I, I'm I'm fairly confident. I think you saw in the email thread that others were fairly confident as well that moved to 112 
the chance that it's actually going to affect anything technically is very small. Um, and again, I'm probably causing problems by conflating the issue with I think we need better testing with what we have. So if uh, we want to take those uh, two uh, separately, let's take it separately. I think the, the point is taken, right? So uh, again, so so I, to me, the more important thing is getting the tacking version in the, the mechanism that, that the Jira established at this point, right? So 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 again, delaying two, three, four, five, uh, five weeks. I don't see any. I, I unless unless we delay we delay the the two dot zero release the whole thing, you know, until we have full functionality. I I, I, then, I, I think I, I think one of the points, and David, maybe if I'm speaking for you, I think one of the points is let's get our developers testing in an HA way on a more regular basis, and let's break their habits, and let's get get let's get things let's get let's try to build better development habits so that we're testing this more. Um, I don't know. Is that kind of is that one of the things you're trying to say as well, David? I don't know. Um, that, that, that I, mean, is, I think that's exactly what he was saying. That, that's partly we should be we should be developing as we deploy. I mean, that's part of the DevOps model, right? right. Um, and we're not. And and I understand the reasons. Again, I'm not. I'm, I'm guilty. Just I'm as guilty as the next. Um, so I do think we need to change those behaviors. But I also think we need more cross-functional testing, if you will, in terms of the people working on the core need to be sure that they're beating up on the adapters or things that they're not working on and the people that are working on the adapters or things that aren't core need to be beating up on the core uh, so so that people come at different components from different perspectives to ensure the best test coverage i guess and then of course the whole automation comes into play um we're, we're building i feel my opinion is we're, we're building this under time pressures and as kind of experimental less than as a production software line if that makes sense and, and again i understand why you know i i can reason why um but i'd like to see some behaviors come into the development process uh, that might give us a better a more safe product down the line and i'm Great. gonna oh. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to have to wrap up discussion because we're about out of time, and I know the SEBA call is starting, and Zach and others need to move there. So I believe I heard mainly support for going, and Sean said, I'm not sure if I have your view yet, but moving to go 1.12, low risk, we should probably go ahead and do that, which would delay tagging for a bit, but we're not expecting to be able to change people's behavior at this point, so it sounds like most likely the move would then be to go ahead and um, after the unit testing, go ahead and do, I've got something in my throat, sorry. Well, I, I guess. Go ahead I, and, oh, go ahead, Sean. So I was, I, I mean, I, I don't really see the urgency for 1.12, and I think that's just a separate issue that needs to get taken care of as we move forward, but, um, you know, I guess, the real issue is, I guess, doing the testing or, or doing development and testing in a in a HA environment. I, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I, I guess is there a, there's probably no way to force that that, that to happen, right? I mean, uh, people are going to build what's more expedient for testing the features that they're testing. I guess. I mean, but. Um, what we could perhaps do is line up some time on one of our calls to see if David, I don't know if you want to put some suggestions together. <laughs> <laughs> and well, clearly, I and wasn't trying it, to make more work for me. I wanted other people. To do it. <laughs> and I, I was going to say, see if we can find folks who have environments that would allow them to do this type of testing with the HA core, and and then see if we can. Uh, get some some sense of who has the capability and who who is willing to volunteer some time to work on that as well. We can try that on one of the future calls if that would be useful. Would that help or TBD? So I know we're out of time. 
let me let me throw something on the thread and we can see where it okay. goes from there or on the email list and see where it goes from there okay so i think we'll wrap up for today since we're out of time we'll try and i think on thursday do some uh, picking up of what we didn't cover today with going over new jiras and then also we deferred the documentation discussion for 2.0 and beyond to thursday as well so we'll see if we can resolve uh, this over some additional email exchanges and then uh, pick up on Thursday with a, a continuation of some of the topics we didn't get to today. With that, I'll go ahead and stop the recording since we're out of time.